things might have just taken a turn for the worst for Representative Matt Gates, who is currently in the middle of a trafficking scandal. Now, the Daily Beast is now reporting that a cooperating witness might actually be able to confirm the existence of a damning phone call between Joel Greenberg and Matt Gates. This phone call could prove the allegations that Gates had known that he had indeed been trafficking and having relations with a minor. So, not good. Uh, now, two sources claim that a witness was actually in the room when said alleged call took place. That witness has been identified as Big Joe Ellicott. So now, Big Joe Ellicott is an employee, or maybe was, I don't know, uh, his current employment status. He's in a little bit of trouble. Um, but he was a Seminole County, uh, uh, an employee at the Seminole County Tax Office. And Joel Green for, uh, Greenberg's longtime best friend. Now, Joel Greenberg had recently pleaded guilty to fraud and drug charges as part of a cooperation agreement with federal prosecutors. So let me get into more details about this. Now, according to two people briefed in the matter, Greenberg allegedly made a fairly short phone call to Gates on September 4th of 2017. So now this phone call is believed to have been a warning from Greenberg to Matt Gates telling him, don't mess with this girl. This, this young girl that you have been seeing, turns out she's a little too young. She was not the legal age of consent. And so now the sources couldn't say whether Ellicott had discussed the call with the investigators, uh, but they do claim that his account for being in the room and listening to the phone call could be of critical interest to the investigation, especially since it would match a key claim that Greenberg himself had made in a confession letter that is now in the hands of federal agents. Now, in the letter, Greenberg wrote after his indictment in late 2020 as part of an effort to beg Trump for a presidential pardon, Greenberg claimed that he, Gates, and others had sex with a minor they believed to be 19 at the time. And again, there's a, a lot of uh, evidence that not only was she a minor at the time, uh, was she actually a minor at the time, but she had also been flown across state lines. And so that's what makes it a sex trafficking case. Now, um, Greenberg first learned that she had been underage after receiving an anonymous tip on September 4th, 2017. He then confirmed her age by using her, uh, using the uh, official Florida State Driver's License database. So that is something that he should have access to, but for work. Now he's using it for personal reasons. And so that's why I question like, oh, the guy could probably lose his job or has most likely uh, lost his job as a result of this, because you're not supposed to use that personal, that, that database of people to dig up information on others for personal reasons. Uh, and so again, there's that massive invasion of privacy that you have here. Uh, so now on that date, he confirmed her age by using that database uh, and then afterwards called Matt Gates. He said, quote, in this confession, I immediately called the congressman and warned him to stay clear of this person and informed him she was underage, Greenberg wrote in a handwritten, uh, handwritten draft of the letter, adding that Gates was equally shocked and disturbed by this revelation. No kidding. There was no further contact with this individual until after her 18th birthday, he added. Now there's more. Um, as the Daily Beast reports, they found another additional detail from Greenberg's plea agreement, uh, a timestamp. So this timestamp of when uh, is when Greenberg had allegedly accessed the DMV database to look up the girl's age, which happened to be on September 4th, 2017, at approximately 1.29 p.m. So now investigators are looking at Ellicott to try to tie those two pieces of information together. Now, again, a little synopsis, right? Greenberg gets the tip, looks up her information, calls up Gates. 
and then tells him, you got to stop seeing this girl. And apparently Ellicott was in the room to hear that phone call to corroborate what had happened. So now we don't know if he has talked to investigators right now. We don't have that information. Uh, but if he did or if he is willing to, they could confirm that and then go and look at Greenberg or Gates' own phone records and determine whether or not Greenberg had made that call immediately after accessing the database. Because again, it's not just like, oh, there was a call. First there was access and then there was a call. Um, but we don't know what's in the, since we only had the metadata or you would potentially have the metadata, you don't actually know what the conversation was about. It could be something completely different or it could be that warning. And so that's why we need Ellicott's uh, uh, corroboration of what had happened. Uh, and so if you have that corroboration where you have Ellicott saying, oh yeah, I did overhear this call and it was, it was Greenberg warning Gates, stop seeing this girl. She is definitely underage. Well, that's pretty damning. And it really makes that case. Now, it would also, by the way, obliterate his defense. Now, Matt Gates has been out there since this investigation had started, since the scandal had broken, uh, he would say, oh no, this is a lie. There, you know, people are just trying to, they're trying to blackmail me or extort me or my father. Uh, and so, you know, the, the total fake news, this didn't actually happen. Now, afterwards, it actually morphed to, okay, so yes, I was seeing this girl, but I didn't know she was 17. I, 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 she was 19. She told me she was 19. I didn't know. I had no idea that, you know, when I was seeing her. And then as soon as I found out, I stopped seeing her. Well, now also, well, that ends his defense um, for that as well, because eight months after the alleged warning, he had been sending her money. The congressman had Venmoed Greenberg $900 in two different back-to-back -back payments, writing in one memo to, quote, hit up blank using the nickname for the girl. And by that time, she was five months past her 18th birthday, which now, of course, makes it only creepy instead of creepy and illegal as Gates had turned 36 earlier that week. And so that's right now, that's not good for Mr. Gates. Things aren't looking good. Uh, and if they get that again, if, if this guy talks to investigators and corroborates the story, well, that's it. We might be saying down goes Matt Gates.